Asante. Sini taule kina le damu. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I equally rise to support the report from the Joint Committee of the Finance and Budget Committees. In approving the nominee to serve as the second deputy governor of Central Bank. Mr. Speaker, I listened to part of the committee members asking questions. And one of the things that really all Kenyans are going to be asking is how do we put money back into their pockets? And I believe um, the then uh, candidate who we are now discussing answered that the answer lies in lowering interest rates. There's a lot that is happening in this country, Mr. Speaker. And I hope that this current nominee will approve, and I hope that this Senate will approve him, will be able to look at the informal sector and how the informal sector is attacked by unscrupulous microfinance entities that loan this money you know, to people who are poor, and they end up paying interest rates of almost 100%. Mr. Speaker, you'll find that people in the informal sector and also people just in rural areas will be told to borrow money through mobile apps. And once they borrow that money from mobile apps, they end up paying so much money in terms of interest. I believe that it is time that Central Bank relook at the policy on lending institutions. From tier one bank, tier two, tier three, and also down all the way to these micro enterprises and also these small lending institutions which are there. There's another discussion, Mr. Speaker, because I listened keenly to what uh, Gerald was saying, that when Safaricom, when Michael Joseph uh, thought of introducing M-Pesa, he met him and they discussed about the introduction of M-Pesa services, which now everyone here depends on M-Pesa. At that point, no one really had the vision, had seen it ahead, like 20 years ahead, to see how far the development or innovation of M-Pesa would be. But today, Mr. Speaker, M-Pesa is a financial institution. It has got nothing to do with telcos. It is essentially a financial institution. And I think it's about time that we delink the telco or telcos from financial institutions so that it can be regulated 100% by Central Bank. Because right now when you're looking at the regulations that a company like Safaricom goes through, there's some which is the Central Bank, there's some with the ICT authority. So I think it's about time that we look at the whole, the whole, uh, the whole issue. What is also important, Mr. Speaker, is that earlier today a staffer from my office told me that when they went to one of the financial institutions that is now has been nominated to receive sharp payments. They were told that they can only pay using cash, that they cannot pay with a check. Then it begs the question, why do we have check payments as one of the modes of paying? So Mr. Speaker, it is important that Central Bank get the correct answers from DTB Bank, from KCB Bank, who are sending away institutions that are paying by checks, telling them that unless you have an existing account with that bank, they will not accept a, a check from any other, any other financial institution. It is also important to streamline on how government services should be paid for. If we are paying everything on each citizen, then we need to figure out how we account for that. Because in Parliament, we are told today that all payments should be made using checks. Then when you go to government institutions, they tell you, no, we need you to do what? to pay in cash. So when in, in an office or an officer is given money and he has to pay, that money is written under their name in the form of impress, tomorrow the auditors will come and say this officer collected so much money on impress, forgetting the context in which that money was collected. So I think it is imperative that when we have these monetary policies, they cut across. One of the things that I hope that Gerald will be able to assist the governor in determining has got to do with this issue that had been introduced in this country on how much interest a financial institution can be able to charge. Businesses were thriving, Mr. Speaker, when we knew that 
the bank should only charge a maximum of about four points above the uh, base lending rate. So if the base lending rate is around, uh, that is set by central bank, if it is 10%, now it is, it is 12 percent now, we should, we should revisit the, the discussion of reintroducing a maximum points that a bank can be able to charge for interest. That is how you encourage a young economy to be able to grow. That is how you encourage money to be able to circulate. But Mr. Speaker, when you have a credit lending system in a country, which is not fully defined, you'll find that Someone will rush to a financial institution and get a loan, and because the loan will be on a reducing balance, by the time they end up paying that loan, throw away the induplem uh, rule, throw away any other rule that uh, has got to do with uh, protecting the lender and also the borrower, they will be told, you will, this is how much you'll pay, and if you don't pay, we'll come and auction you. So I think we need to put some discipline. Allow this country to develop. You know, we are, we are really, we want to encourage youth to be able to open businesses. But if a youth is opening a business and they go to a bank and they ask for a loan and they are given the interest rate as 20 percent, you know, 20 percent. But by the time they are paying that loan, that interest rate, because it is on a reducing balance, has gone up to like almost 36 or 40 percent. We need to have control. We need to find a way that we can encourage financial, you know, financial institution to do clean business. There's a lot of punky punky business out there with this financial institution. You know, if you today, Mr. Speaker, you ask these financial institutions, particularly those in tier one, to be able to publish their NPL, you'll be surprised, you'll be shocked. Especially these financial institutions that are trading in Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Rwanda, Burundi, you know, even South Sudan, you will find that for them to balance their books, maybe their bank in Rwanda is doing better than Kenya. But you'll hear them saying that we've made so much profit this year. But if you now go into the details, they always say the devil is in the detail, you'll find that the NPL, the non-performing loans portfolio of particular banks, especially those banks in tier one, is unbearable. There are people who own some of them owns like three or four billions. But you'll not see that because there is a business. In fact, Mr. Speaker, if you work a lot with financial institutions and you borrow money and you take a loan, you will find that if you delay in paying in two months, that bank will be after you like no one's business. They will call you and call you and call you. If you happen to dodge them, when you hit the third month, the calls reduce. On the fourth month, you will not get any call. So ask yourself what happens. That money, whatever loan you owe, is now put into a suspense account. You know, it can either be one that is written off, that does not really allow this financial institution to present their actual position. So when they are performing, when they are calculating their performance, or trying to demonstrate how they made profit, they don't consider that money which is in the Spence account. Then something interesting happens again. You find an in, in, international institution that comes in and purchases and buy those loans. So the people who now be forcing you to pay loans are people who have already bought that loan for them to be able to go now and follow you and you end up paying. So I think we need to be clear. We have a young economy that with good leadership from the governor and this distinguished fellow who we are now uh, approving or debating to approve, a man who has served Central Bank or the financial institution in this country for 36 years is not someone who you can just wish away. I think it's about time now that we encourage this kind of meritocracy. You know, he's being nominated because he's got content. He has been able to work and see all these different governments come, all these different policies come, so it's about time that we look at everything that we're doing, allow meritocracy, support this individual, but also when he sits there, just because you're seated up there and you are not now hanging out with the technocrats who discuss what is happening on the ground, maintain the same principle of wanting to see a better country. It is important that we have good monetary policy. I long for the time, Mr. Speaker, that will say Kenya 
as a country is going to be not only the center of gravity financially for the East African region, but a country that a lot of people will come here, people will be able to live here peacefully, enjoy. Mr. Speaker, I know you come from Meru, and uh, the economy of Meru has got to be supported, and particularly in the Mirai industry. We see young people, allow them to be able to sell. I long for the time when we can actually even be talking about you know, other things, which uh, maybe if I mention here, uh, my other brother will look at me and say, what are you talking about? You know, you see, when you look at marijuana, they, they are all different issues, and it's a big economy there. But not particularly, I'm not equating it with Mira. You know, there is CBD oil, which is used, we go to see a lot of different products, it's used in hospitals. So there's a lot that we can actually be able to discuss and support with a good monetary policy, one that is predictable. You know, we don't want a system where people are saying, oh, you know, your tax system is not predictable. Because today you have these policies, tomorrow you have this other policy. But when we have, you know, a central bank policy, policies that can be able to help an economy grow, we will go very far, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, finally, on this issue of overnight lending, I think it's about time that uh, the leadership at Central Bank to look at it. Some financial institution will even tell you at the end of the month, don't pay yet, because banks will be doing overnight lending. You know? So that overnight lending sometimes affects businesses, because banks will want to have a lot of liquidity, so that at the end of the month they can do the overnight lending, make more money, and it, it affects how people are able to do their business. So in summary, three key important issues that I hope that uh, Gerald uh, will put his experience is number one, how do we ensure that we regulate these other lenders who are not regulated? I think we should put everyone to be regulated by Central Bank. You know, if you leave out such that you can just come up with an app and lend money, it is not something which is going to help this country grow. Secondly, it is about time that we have a discussion on how we treat M-Pesa, on how we treat uh, maybe Airtel money. Let them establish financial institutions. You know, have a bank which is called M-Pesa, such that we can have ATMs that you can go withdraw and deposit. Currently, with M-Pesa, with ATMs, you can only withdraw, but you cannot deposit at the ATMs. So we need to be able to advance that further. We are now at a time when we fully regulate it, allow it to be able to work well, and then they can also, you can actually be able to have it as a bank statement. I know a lot of institutions now, uh, when they lend money, they allow Kenyans to submit their um, MPESA statements. But it's a better way that even, even uh, for people to be able to develop, you can show that I'm only banking with MPESA because it works better. Because that money will be able to, to go into, into the rural areas. And then interest rates. The last thing, which is very, very key, and I hope that you will take this seriously, is the issue of reintroducing the base, the, the, the points maximum of about four points above the best, uh, into, uh, the best uh, lending rate. That in itself, it may not be very attractive to local financial institutions, but you'd rather have good books rather than you hiding your NPL because you want to show that you are making a lot of money by ch overcharging people, you know, high interest rates, them not paying for the loans that they have taken. I thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I support. Thank you. Next is uh, the Dean of the Majority Party, Senator Allen. Mr. Speaker, I rise to support this report. Uh, 